Welcome to the show, Southern Oregon Safaris, and we're the Buffalo Rum. Today we're going to talk about pygmy hippopotamuses, Jerry. I've never heard of such a thing. Well, we're going to talk about it. Well, we'll be right back then. <laughs> We're the Buffalo Rome. I'm Jerry. I'm Hayden. And we're back on the top of the mountain. It's one of my favorite spots. We got Mount McLaughlin in the background. I got my good friend sitting right here. And we want to talk about what he said in the bumper. Uh, pygmy hippopotamus. hippopotamus. Yeah, like hippopotami. He's more than one hippo. Maybe hippopotami. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, pygmy hippopotamus. Yeah, so um, I used to have a couple pygmy hippopotamuses way back in the day. Uh, approximately 29 years, 30 years ago um, is when I stopped having them. Um, they're really neat little creatures, very elusive little animals, um, crabby little things. <laughs> I mean, you know, their their large their large uh, brother or sister, their their uh, family member is the large hippopotamus, which is I think the third largest mi uh, land mammal. Um, oh, yeah. And so to be, I guess, a miniature version of that's got to suck, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you just have to have a bad attitude. It comes with attitude? Hippos have major yeah. attitude anyway. I mean, hippos are yeah. very deadly, uh, especially the Nile hippo. is probably one of the most deadly animals in Africa. They, they tend I to take a that. lot of people out. Unfortunately, they're very um, territorial, especially of the water. And a lot of people like to go in the water and fish and do things in the water. You wind up in a boat or in the water with a hippo or a crocodile. If the crocodile doesn't get you, the hippo will finish you. Maybe the hippo will start you and the crocodile will finish you. I don't know. One of those things. Anyway, it's a smorgasbord. It's a smorgasbord. But the, the mini pygmy hippo is uh, the miniature version of that animal. And so I guess if I was... Uh, I, it's like a Napoleon complex, I think. They just are crabby because Little man small. syndrome. Little man syndrome, you know? Yeah. I've been accused of that, I think. I <laughs> anyway, so yeah. I worked with and owned pygmy hippos for a number of years. Um, and had a lot of great amount of fun. I got some even some funny stories. Maybe a little funny story I could tell you about pygmy hippo. I want to hear um, and uh, another thing is uh, the reason I had unfortunately parted with my hippo was that I wound up with leukemia uh, oh. back in 1995. And so I was kind of forced at that point to um, relocate my little hippopotamus that I had named um, Petunia. Petunia Piggy, we used to call her. She was like a little pig. Uh, about 300 pounds for female. Males can get about 400 pounds. Okay. Two to three feet tall, uh, between four and six feet long. The babies are adorable. They're like a little football. They're hilarious. Oh. They're hilarious. these big sharp teeth um, people you know we, uh, well let me go back to I don't want to get out of my story my story was that I might have came back in 95 and um, I had to unload the hippopotamus so I sent them to a beautiful place in South Carolina um, it was like a, a private zoo there it's a giant lake they're, they're there um, Ooh, so they live a long time they live 30 to 50 years they live a long time uh, but I do miss the Penelope, Penelope piglet but the reason I brought the, the thing of is today is actually 28 years for me and the only reason I bring that up as well is that I want to tell people hey uh, when you're um, told you have cancer and your days are numbered don't always buy into that I was told I had 50% chance of surviving five years Th that's a coincidence that was Hayden. 1996 I was told I got lucky I'll be lucky I have 50% chance of surviving five years back in 1996 wow. so that's the only reason I bring that up and, and that's what reminded me of the hippopotamus is that I got rid of her about 28 and a half years ago and it was due to my cancer. That's and interesting. You have an anniversary date. I have one yesterday. Yesterday. And wow. Sunday, Easter Sunday, yeah. I ended up in cardiac arrest, uh, well, landing in the hospital. <laughs> and then uh, the Tuesday, a year, uh, 20, 23 years ago, yesterday, no, today, 
Huh. It's Tuesday. Twenty. Yeah. We have an anniversary April 2nd, today. We share yeah, something more in common day, than we know. Yeah, twenty-three years ago today, I underwent the uh, open heart surgery to keep me on this side of the grass. Well, that's nice. So well, we have here we are. Look, we're in a, a hot sun and a beautiful sunny day in beautiful <laughs> Southern Oregon, living life, and they told us we we're goners, and here we are. So I just point that out because it reminds me of the hippo. And uh, I'm not asking for a happy anniversary thing. I'm just saying, if somebody tells you your life, uh, your your future is grim because of a disease, don't always listen to that. Even when the doctors and the experts tell you, you just keep on living. Just, yeah. just ignore it. Let yeah. it go right past you. Because if you believe in that stuff, you'll wind up making yourself crazy, and you will wind up in the ground. So, um, smile and take every day uh, with a grain of salt, and appreciate everything. And God bless uh, this beautiful world yes. that we get to stay in it for as long as we do. And, only God can let, let that happen, right? Yeah, I had to hang around a little while longer to annoy my blushing bride. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's our goal, right? Is just to hang around long enough to really make the loved ones in our life miserable. Yeah. Uh, but and, anyway, and tell dad jokes. <laughs> back into hippopotamus. Sorry for all that, but I Go wanted ahead. to put that because it reminded me of hippo. Wow. Uh, you know, Disney and, and the cartoons always show these hippos, the hippos with these beautiful little round mushroom teeth, these little button teeth. They're so cute. You know, and they make them look harmless. Mm -hmm. Well, that is not really a reality. The, the if you've seen like a giant boar, like a razorback or a giant boar, they get these giant tusks that grow up, mm -hmm. and they rub together and they get really sharp on the edges, and they will cut you in half. Oh. So hippo really has these crazy fangs that lock interlock from the top to the bottom, and as they you'll hear them squeaking, they squeak, squeak, squeak when they're mad. That's them rubbing those teeth together. Mm. It's to keep them razor sharp. So a hippo can literally bite a man in half. Just like a razor blade. Those teeth are razor sharp. Wow. And so the pygmy hippo is the same thing. They have these tusks in their mouth. They're extra sharp. The reason that you see the cartoons and the Disney characters, you don't, don't want to give kids nightmares. You've got to make mm -hmm. hippos cuter than they are. Mm -hmm. And they are cute, really. And put them then in the tutu. And, but yeah. in the circuses and zoos, at one point, they were cutting those, those tusks down to okay. the gum, just a little short. So they had these little cute little round little buttons. And that's how it wound up being this cartoonish, cute little animal that didn't oh, scare children. So, but in reality, hippos are pretty wicked. Back to pygmy hippos, um, I, the hippo boy I had, um, Penelope Piglet, uh, she was a wonderful creature. They were actually Penelope, and I can't remember the other one's name, a little older, uh, but um, they were really fun. Um, but they are, they poop in the water, so it's very, very messy, and dirty, and stinky. Uh, their, their, their fecal matter really does have a very pungent, strong odor. And you gotta clean that water pool, that pool there, Pool that they submerge themselves and you got cleaned out frequently because um, even a filtration system unless you're at a zoo it's a massive expensive filtration system to take that much material out all the time and keep it clean enough so what we would do is we would just dump the water um, and refill it which um, is probably not the most efficient system but it was the better way to do it for us at the time but anyway uh, they also um, when they defecate they swirl their tail or wag it really fast and what happens is the fecal matter splatters it's like a blender um, it reminds me of a manure spreader it's from like a, a tractor spreader. out in you agriculture. You don't want to be around them when they're pooping because this stuff just kind of flings and flies everywhere. Uh, something else that's really interesting about uh, hippopotamus, hippopotami, uh, is that they sweat a pink sweat. They call it uh, pink blood. And it's not blood at all. It's a sweat. And, and what it is is it's actually a natural sunscreen. Yeah, think about that. If you can actually harvest it and milk that out of them, uh, it's uh, they create their own sunscreen so they don't sunburn. So it happens to sweat out these, these glands, this, this pinkish, uh, bloody looking uh, fluid. Mm -hmm. And that actually, if you rub it, it'll turn white foam. Yeah, and so like I used to even like put it on my arms. It doesn't have any odor. I don't. I didn't notice an odor or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a sunscreen. It naturally, they naturally produce their own sunscreen. So I thought that's. I think that's a really interesting characteristic of such a. I mean, nature is amazing. Yes, I mean, think about it is. That. Can you imagine if we could produce our own sunscreen? That would be pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, um, they're herbivores. They eat nothing but you know. We fed hay mostly to them, but you feed greens. They love like yeah. spinach and any kind of greens. Or and yummies. occasionally they eat a fisherman. Sometimes we'll give them some apples or carrots. Um, that's not would not they be eating <laughs> in the wild, but we like to. They're a West African animal, so they come from like kind of the the, the forested areas. They're forest hippo. Um, they come out of the water a lot more and are comfortable out of the water a lot more than a 
nylon on full size hippo. Gotcha. So you, but they're very elusive. You won't really see them in the wild. Um, they usually are nocturnal and only come out at night. Uh, a lot of people uh, say they never even see them ever. That's why they're, they're elusive. Yes, they are very elusive. Exactly. Um, and there, some of the, some of the, uh, there's a couple different um, subspecies of the pygmy hippo, and I believe one of them is already extinct. Um, but they are really uh, heavily threatened and now on their way to extinction, unfortunately, especially in the wild. Captivity, I think there's enough of them in the zoos, but in the wild, they're in really bad shape. You know, their numbers are really low, getting lower by the day. So it's very unfortunate because they're a really cool creature. Um, fun story about hippopotamuses. So okay. I had uh, been living in Northern California on my parents' ranch for some time after I got out of my leuke, uh, or sorry, just before I went into my leukemia treatments. And um, I had Penelope in a fenced off area around a pond. The pond was about uh, 60, 80 feet round and about 10 feet deep. And so a lot of time you would, you know, they can stay underwater for five minutes at a time. They even sleep, they can sleep underwater. And their body will literally come up above, catch a breath of air and go back down. Even while they're asleep, they can do wow. that. Yeah. Anyway, um, they can come up for air without, as, as, uh, without even thinking about it, even while they're asleep. It's just an automatic thing. That's amazing. Yeah, isn't that cool? Um, spent a lot of time underwater though. Uh, so I was used to like sometimes looking out there and just seeing an empty pond and not panicking. Um, but uh, one day I came home and I didn't see her. I looked in her pasture and she wasn't in the pasture, she was in the water. So I went out to the water and I'm looking around and I still don't see her. And I start kind of waiting. I'm like, well, she's got to come up for air. I still didn't see her. I'm like, so all of a sudden, my heart starts racing. I'm like, oh my gosh, where's Penelope Piglet? I mean, where's she at? I mean, I'm starting to panic. Keep in mind, I'm in Northern California where there's rivers and lakes and creeks everywhere. So a hippopotamus getting out would be catastrophic. Um, but there was a fence on the outside of the herf pasture. The property was fenced as well. But still, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's got to be somewhere you know, close by. So I'm in a panic, running her all over the place, looking for her, calling out for her. Nothing. The grass is about three feet tall, so I'm zigzagging all over the place, frantically looking. So I start realizing, oh my God, she's gotten out. I'm in big trouble. Um, I've got to find this animal ASAP because it's a serious violation with the state and the feds and all that. You can't have animals escaping. I've never had anything like this happen before. So I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, and I'm checking the gates are closed and I'm like, how in the heck did this happen? Um, somehow the mud had slid underneath the pond and there was a little gap where she was able to squeeze out underneath that thing. And so um, I start calling everybody I know, going, guys, you got to help me. I'm begging. I, I, I need to put a big team of people together. We need to literally grid everything until we find this animal. <laughs> um, and we have to do it before dark. So I call everybody I know. And I, got, I think I brought wrangled like 20 people from the neighborhood. And we're all screaming, Penelope, and grid, gridding and, and trying to zigzag through all the grass, trying to find her. The whole day goes by and I'm like going, oh my Lord, I'm in so much, this is, this is the worst thing ever. I can't imagine this happening to me. Uh, so I'm starting to get a little desperate. Um, and at this point I'm like, I'm gonna have to call the state and the feds and tell them what's happened here because this, this is serious. I mean, this goes back a long time ago, but I mean, this was a scary situation. But I'm like, I know she's gotta be close by. There's no way she could've got out of the secondary fence. It's just too well done, but we couldn't find her all over the property. So pretty much as I'm giving up, I pick up my, start dialing my phone to call first the state of California to tell them I've got a situation on my hands. And as I'm on the phone waiting on uh, for the automated system and pushing three, four, five, waiting on hold, I just poof, the face plant right in the grass. Tripped on a big boulder, I guess. Well, it wasn't a big boulder, it was actually Penelope. <laughs> She's sleeping in the grass, about it, it, 25 feet from the pond and oh. her pasture, and I had gone through there 20 times and never saw her. I don't know how, but the grass covered up, but just it must have been perfect. The and way she I blended walked, in, made her look like a rock. I don't know. I must have thought it was a rock. I, we all walked. Everybody kept saying, we were through there. How did we not see her? But I literally did a face plant, tripped right over, startled her, startled myself. That was, I was so thankful. But that is one of my funny stories.
the other, actually, I just thought of a second funny story, and maybe this one isn't as funny. It was another scary situation as well. Uh, we had large fires in the area. This is a, yes. a couple, maybe, uh, I think, six months or so after this incident. Mm -hmm. um, I We had big fires everywhere, and all of a sudden, I look outside of my window, and I see one of those giant Sikorsky helicopters with one of those giant buckets, buckets under it, dipping in her pond. Oh, no. And I am like running oh, out there screaming, no. no, 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 waving my arms and the guys, I like, can see them in the cockpit looking at me like, well, whatever, dude, we're entitled to your water. If we have a fire, it's an emergency. And I'm like, <laughs> no. And thank God they didn't scoop her up mm -hmm. and drop her on a fire somewhere. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the headline on that one? Oh line? my God. But that scared the tar out of me. I almost had to change my underwear from that one. Oh. But anyway, not everybody has these types of uh, stories to tell. Not everybody has a hippo. Not everybody has a pygmy hippo. <laughs> Only a few of us are that mentally ill to have such a thing. But I really enjoyed my time with the hippo, the, the mini hippos. They were they were a lot of fun. Wow. Really cool animal. Well, thank you for sharing those Great stories. Experience. You're very welcome. And happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. <laughs> thank you. And I'm sure lots of people out there in YouTube land have anniversaries to celebrate and something like that, stories oh. like that. I didn't know this about Hayden. Today was our both of our anniversaries for this. This is uh, April second. Weird, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Tuesday after uh, Easter. Well, yeah. the, another little thing yeah. not to go on, but uh, they asked me if I wanted to get my bone marrow transplant. They tried to do it on April first, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing April Fool's Day. I'm sorry, just not. Pick the second. So that's how I'm honored being the second. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. Anyway. Well, thank you, Hayden, for sharing those wonderful stories My and pleasure. a little adventure with uh, a couple of adventures with a uh, pygmy hippopotamus. Pygmy hippos. So there we go. There you I'm glad it. you guys tuned in to the show and watched. Um, tune in to more adventures. We're going to have some more. Uh, yeah, we got some lined up for you. And so don't you, forget to like this video. Yes. Subscribe and share. Absolutely. Keep sharing. Yes, and ask a question. We got a couple of questions Love we need comments. to answer, but we're going to get to them. So hang in there. I'm Jerry. I'm Hayden. And this is Southern Oregon Safari. We're the Buffalo Room. You guys stay tuned for more adventures and go out and have your own adventure. Bye bye now. Stay safe.